initial years of the European Union were, it seems to me, animated by a spirit of cooperation and collaboration. Uh, but uh, so often happens with good ideas, which actually were strongly supported from the left. <coughs> they can get co-opted, corrupted by money power, corporate power. And I think from something like the Maastricht Agreement onwards, we started to see a sort of neoliberalization of the whole regime throughout uh, Europe in general, going at different speeds, and depending upon cultural and political traditions, so it wasn't a unified process by any means. But I think the framework was set by, uh, by Maastricht, and then further consolidated by uh, Lisbon, and of course, uh, the formation of the Euro, I think then played a very important role in setting up a, a monetary union without any fiscal responsibilities being shared. Uh, and I think uh, that from the very beginning was going to advantage the more powerful members within the union. And so we start to get this uh, division between the powerhouses of the European and uh, everybody else, and while there are kind of compensatory funds which are flowing to the periphery, uh, it is still the case that uh, the primary beneficiary of the European Union, particularly after Maastricht and, and, and Lisbon, was going to be uh, German industry. And uh, I think everybody accepts that, but I want to emphasize here that it's not necessarily the German people. <coughs> it's German corporations, uh, German industry, German you know, export industry in particular, uh, which is mainly benefited. And that, that's not necessarily to the benefit of uh, ordinary people in Germany. I mean, there are some benefits, but I think sometimes if you cast it as Germany versus Greece, for example, instead of the bondholders versus the people, I think you get the wrong end of the political stage.